Thank you prematurely to Lucy and everyone else who's been involved in organizing the day. I've found it to be really tremendously successful and uh, very useful for my own work, which I'd like to share with all of you now. Um, so I'm Lorleen Hoyt, the Director of Programs and Research for the How Do You Say It Talwar Network. That's the first question I always get. How do you say it? Uh, and then the next question is, what is it? Uh, the Talwar Network is a global coalition of engaged universities. And um, we call it the Talwar Network because it was founded in 2005 in the small town of Talwar at the base of the Alps, just in southeastern France near uh, Switzerland in a very lovely place, in fact. Um, when 29 university presidents from 23 different countries met to talk about the future of higher education and what they could do as a group to improve their work and to improve their universities. And really what they decided, I've been told I wasn't there, is um, that they could do more by engaging locally with their neighborhoods, their communities, and um, at the one extreme, co-generating knowledge with local residents, and at the other extreme, perhaps, um, sending student volunteers into the neighborhood to help with various projects, and then all sorts of things in between, service learning and, and other types of forms of engagement. So they, they do refer to themselves as engaged universities, and we very much refer to these types of institutions as engaged universities. Again, they have this commitment to social responsibility in their local neighborhood. Um, the other way of thinking about this is that these university presidents, vice chancellors, and rectors, um, our members, which have grown from 29, uh, about eight, more than 300, 307 to be exact. Am I supposed to be using this? Yeah. I'm sure folks can hear me, but you're, you're recording. So the, the network's grown quite a bit in the last eight years. We've got 307 members in, in 71 countries, and I mention that because we're in the advocacy session of our day, and I'd like for you to think about how our organization can partner with you and with what you're doing to help advance what we all um, are here to talk about today. Um, so just again briefly, they're engaged, they're working with various partners in the communities, private, for-profit uh, sector as well as the government sector, NGOs, philanthropy, and really working to make an impact on societal problems and looking to enlarge notions of knowledge generation and impact. So moving beyond the ivory tower is often how we think about it. Um, and in 2005, in Talwar, there was a, quite a long declaration that all of the presidents signed and all of our um, university leaders signed today when they joined the network. And this is just an ex excerpt to give you just a taste of, of what all of these presidents are committed to. And one piece that isn't here for you to read that I'd like to point out is that, again, they're very much focused on local partnerships for the creation and timely application of new knowledge. This is just a map to give you a sense of our geographic diversity. Our geographic diversity has been a, divine, a defining feature of the coalition since its very beginning. And as you'd imagine, um, engaged universities uh, vary significantly both within and across regions. However, um, one thing that we've seen from our research and our interactions with university leaders is that the larger story is one of a common vision, uh, common strategies, and common cause. The vocabulary and practices, again, vary quite a bit on the ground, but really, um, in many ways, are similar across the board. On the earlier slide, you may have seen that we have an elected steering committee. I just wanted to pause for a moment, say a word about the way that we're governed. Um, we've got 12 elected steering committee members. You can see them here. They, in large part, serve three-year terms. Uh, we have fairly substantial geographic representation. You'll see, I'd like to give a quick shout out to John Wood, <laughs> Secretary General of ACU, very active member. All of the um, steering, com steering, steering committee members are quite active in helping to increase membership, but also in helping us to raise money for our programs and our awards. And I think you'll find those 
of interest, and they're very much tied to our um, emerging action research agenda, which I'd like to share with you. There's, we have a handful of programs, but there's two that I'd like to point to. One is the Youth Economic Development Program that was recently awarded uh, to us through the MasterCard Foundation. They work very much with us as a partner, and we are aiming to address the global crisis in youth unemployment by working with university presidents to change the curriculum, to change notions of research, and to engage students in different forms of civic engagement prior to the graduation so they can form this, the important social and professional net networks that they need to um, either become entrepreneurs in their communities or to um, successfully become employees after graduation. And just recently, in the last few weeks, we've announced our eight demonstration site grantees. Um, so we've been fortunate insofar as we've seen 62 fabulous examples of university community partnerships that are making substantial progress in connecting the university students to gainful employment. We had to go through the arduous task of selecting eight of them to support and work with over the next three years. And uh, we're aiming to strengthen those programs and um, learn from those programs and share that knowledge within the larger network. So that project will run for four years. It was uh, technically launched last year. The awards were made this month. And then we've got three years of working together in various teams. Another program worth highlighting that gives us, again, a chance to see um, the exceptional work that some university leaders are doing around the world is through the annual McJanet Prize for Global Citizenship. We've been running this prize for five years. Every year we get almost 70 applications with just off the charts examples of students and faculty, administrators going out into their local communities, doing community-based research, helping with poverty alleviation, early childhood development, uh, physical and mental health issues, um, all of the types of uh, things you can possibly imagine. And we give particular recognition to those that emphasize student leadership and community leadership, where the partnership is a true partnership and there's not a sense that the university has the exper expertise and that the community is consuming knowledge, but that really knowledge is being co-created on an equal playing field. And we also look for demonstrated impact. Are there different metrics and way of, ways of understanding how the work is impacting student learning outcomes as well as um, community challenges? So the Youth Economic <laughs> Development Initiative, as well as the McJanet Prize, give us a sense of some of the really exceptional work that's happening in these ways in different countries. And we've recently launched an action research program that um, involves members in these communities writing various blog posts, articles, books to try to bring and uh, raise awareness around the work that they're doing and share it within the larger network of universities. And um, we're doing some research of our own with our community partners. We're focusing on 16 university civic engagement programs in 12 countries. And so that we may join forces, I see that we're working with some of the same universities, Tom, and I've met some others in the room who are, are at these universities. I've listed out the countries, and if, if these are any countries you're working in and near and dear to your heart, let's please get in touch so that we can collaborate on this project. Um, there is an emphasis in our work when we look at these exceptional examples. Um, Three-fourths of them are from the global south. One third of them are in sub-Saharan Africa. We recognize that the literature and the knowledge around university civic engagement, university community partnerships is um, heavily dominated by northern perspectives, western perspectives, and we're very keen to learn from the south, um, extract those lessons, and be sure that the knowledge from the south is being shared worldwide. So that's very central to, to what we care about and what we're doing. Um, I was going to just very briefly um, give you a, a sense of some of those exemplars. Uh, Tec de Monterey in Mexico 
is a really good example. Um, Mexico, as many of you may know already, has been practicing this type of university community engagement for a very long time. In fact, Latin America in general has. Uh, Mexico has compulsory social service for all of their undergraduates in order for them to achieve their degree. Uh, Tech has 36 campuses. It's quite um, a large university that reaches into many different neighborhoods. And they've gone beyond this notion of partnership, and that's why I've flagged them here briefly, uh, to becoming really where students have an opportunity to become part of, so to go beyond partnership and become part of the community. Um, teams of students living and working in communities for two to four weeks. Um, and here I've got just a, a quick point about a project they worked on to transform wine and beer bottles into eyeglasses. So that's, you know, in a nutshell, the kind of work that we're interested <coughs> in. Uh, then also University of Veracruzana in Mexico, similar approach except that they've built university houses where students can stay for the entire semester, sometimes the entire year, and these houses are in rural communities um, that are quite impoverished, uh, but yet very rich in, in local knowledge, and uh, there's really a two-way street of, of learning and innovation that takes place between the community partners and the students themselves. Um, another somewhat similar example focused on medical um, and health related local issues. Uh, this one from Malaysia, this was our first prize McJanet winner this year. I see the five minute flag, I'm, I'm doing just fine, not, not a problem. Um, uh, in this instance, and this is happening in China, we've seen this in Hong Kong, this is a sort of model that's emerging in, in different parts of the world by, and supported wholeheartedly by university leaders where uh, a, you know, a department within the university adopts a local village and faculty and staff and students in that department work very closely for a number of years with the people in the community. This, this particular effort really caught our attention for a few reasons. One, they selected a village even though the village uh, known as Kampong Takir um, had no electricity, no running water, uh, no local health clinic. It was really, there was, there was no road to get to the village from the university. So the university did not pick a village that was convenient for them. Uh, they really had to do a lot of work with the infrastructure just to begin <coughs> The partnership with the local village. So that was uh, striking. And also the students there, um, nursing students and medical students, are really embedded, spending a lot of time in the community um, and getting to know quite well. There's only 500 people or so that live there, getting to know the people very well and tracking their health vital statistics for many years in a row and, and really forming these deep relationships where they move a bit beyond the, the vital signs and a little bit more into um, the, a holistic sense of what the community needs and, and how all the different components of the community, infrastructure and other systems impact the community health. So quite a good example. A very different example from the American University in Cairo in Egypt um, where students are really um, breaking beyond the ivory tower to get out into the community and to develop some employability and, and professional skills. I will just gloss over this. We have lots of examples on our website. This ju that just gives you a sense of the range of them. I wanted to save a couple of minutes just to highlight the very good and influential, hardworking regional networks that we uh, learn with and partner with. Um, so if, for those of you who are not aware, this engaged university movement is a well and live and growing in different parts of the world. Um, Asia Engage is a fast growing and, and active network in Asia, clearly. The Latin American Center for uh, Service Learning. There's a few examples you can see. The one that you can't read readily is the MAN, I'm sorry, the MAN Arab University Alliance. Pacific engagement, so there's quite a lot happening in the Arab region as well. Um, again, there um, these are allies of ours in large part because they are asking the basic question, whose knowledge is valued? 
<laughs> and how can new knowledge serve society? And those are things clearly um, central to the Tower Network and to many of us here today. So this is my concluding slide. And um, just to, to sum up here, uh, there really are a growing number of university leaders who see that civic engagement is central to their ability to diversify their faculty uh, recruitment and retention, their student recruitment and retention, their student success. Um, they're finding that university civic engagement is critical to their own survival as well as the survival of their surrounding neighborhoods. Um, they're also finding that they are able to work in partnership effectively to solve local problems. And uh, an interesting piece for us that I care a lot about personally is that as these presidents continue to come together through the regional networks, come to our global conference, partner with you, etc., um, our society begins to move away from a monoculture of scientific knowledge to more of an ecology of knowledge, where all types of expertise and knowledge are valued in our society. And then, this is a dream of ours, but it's, it's always worth holding on to and espousing your dreams, because someday you'll, you'll see them come to fruition. Um, we're, we're hoping that in, in the future we'll see that the ivory tower, the ivory tower is a, a relic. The notion that universities can stand alone and, and produce knowledge for knowledge's sake um, becomes a thing of the past, and that the gold standard with universities and colleges will be the engaged university. So here's some contact information. I think I still did okay with the time. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.